Dawson, I took the last one. Uh, this one I have to open. Sure. Kirsten, is that your Gatorade? Why do you think you're the boss, Chloe? You're the I know, she's my sister, so she's suspicious. You're the youngest here, and you think you're the boss. She's not here. No, she did. No, all right my name is Jeremy if you guys don't know who I am Jim is uh, at a birthday party and uh, I'll be teaching your lesson today so uh, I hope you brought your ears <laughs> What? So if you haven't noticed, I brought a camera. It's to critique myself and show Pastor Jim. So if it makes you uncomfortable, I think I put the camera about like right here. So. So I'm not in the camera. No. It's about. No, it's got its Audrey's big nose right. Is she in it? No. Am I in it? She's not in it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's pray. Um. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for all that you do and your provision. We don't deserve any of it. You created us because you love us and. We exist to know you. Father, I pray that uh, you open our hearts and our minds and uh, you bless us during your study and you give us what we need so we may teach people about your glory and witness to them. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. All right, uh, today's study is Psalms 1. Anyone familiar with Psalms 1? Ben? Looks like they might be racing to get there. Oh yeah, we just, oh yeah, actually like a few weeks ago we read it with my, me and my dad read it. You're kind of like, you're going to have to slap. <laughs> yeah, what, uh, what is it about? I, I forgot because I have a terrible memory. Okay. Do you know where to find it in the Bible? Psalms 1 or Psalm. Psalm 1, uh, chapter Psalm 1. Uh, All right, I'm going to go ahead and read Psalm 1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and read Psalm 1. So, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. So to recap, the first verse is, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. My first question to you guys would be, what does the word blessed mean? Okay. Anyone else? When someone says you're blessed, what does that mean? Always there with you. That's pretty good. Yeah. Fortunate. Fortunate. Can you elaborate a little more?
<laughs> Any anyone else or whenever Brent, uh, Ben remembers blessed what does it mean to be blessed No All right um so it's important when we interpret God's word the word blessed could mean um happy which it does in the American dictionary or if you google it but we need a bible dictionary because sometimes those words they meant something different to the original audience and so our interpretation to be blessed would be similar to what she said um to be happy or happy are God's servants um, we live in a world where people are seeking happiness outside of God such as relationships such as fame or money you know, you guys heard this story over and over and over again. Um, true happiness comes from being God's servants, to serve him. Uh, another interpretation could be uh, happy is the person who God corrects. We live in a world where people don't like to be corrected. And it could be for the smallest things, right? Could you please give me that? I will do that. I know, right? How many people know people who know everything. I know, I know, I know. Almost any teenager. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, be, you, you'll be surprised that at my age, and I'm sure uh, Donna and Mike's age, um, that's like the number one go-to when you're young. I know, I know, I know. Right? You guys say that too when you're young? I know, I know. So, blessed is someone who God corrects, and that person will be very happy. It's a, that's a blessing in itself. Uh, my question to you would be, do you want to be happy, and why or why not? Yes, because who the heck does not want to be happy? <laughs> right. What makes you guys happy? TV. Just watch sitting down and watching TV for hours. TV makes you happy. Kind of Reading. Friends. friends. Family. Family. Music. <clears throat> All right. Moving on to our next study, we're going to get into that. Who uh, Who is the text talking about when it says, "Blessed is the one." Right. And so that, um, that, to me, that means any human, mm -hmm. any, any person. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Jesus and God. Yes. They're blessed. Anyone else? Or? Nope. All right. So in our interpretation, it, it, to uh, be the blessed one, it could be refer to anybody. Um, it's really getting at not just blessed are those who listen, but blessed are those who apply what they learn, right? So many people listen to God's word. Many people hear God's word. He, they, we even hear the gospel, but we don't do what we hear. For those who actually believe are those who do what they believe in. So if the Bible says don't gossip, right? We all make mistakes. I get it. I do it too. But if I believe that God loves me, right, then I believe that the Bible is the word of God. And everything written in it, based off of my faith, I would try my best to please God. I'm not going to get it perfect, but I'm going to try. And so whatever you do, that's what you believe. Does that make sense? So if you don't believe the Bible, you're not going to read it, and let alone you're not going to try to apply it. So a lot of people say, oh, I'm Christian because I read my Bible, but they never apply it in their life. So does that make someone a believer? I don't think that they would fully believe 
Right. Right. I don't think I'm ever going to read through the entire Bible. It's way too long for my eyes. I read an entire children's Bible in one night. Ooh. Well, if you read the Bible in different sections, like a chapter of it. Say again. Right. We're not. We're not going to get it perfect. I'm not saying that we need to be perfect. I'm saying we need to try. That's what God expects. He expects us to try. You know, and that's what grace is supplied for. When we do mess up, we can lean on His grace to help us get back up and try again. <clears throat> so. What does it mean to walk in step with the wicked? When you hear that, what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else have anything to add? And what would that what would that be um, specifically? Right. So there, we're being tempted all the time. And you'll find if you remain a Christian, you're going to be tempted more. And, um, or you'll realize the temptation as well. And people will try to tempt you to go do evil things. And it says blessed. But another word is happy is the person who does not do those things with, with um, those people. Or another interpretation could be to take their advice. Have you guys ever taken bad advice? Like you trusted someone, like, what do you think I should do? And they said, you should do this. And you did what they said, and it backfired. Yeah? Do you want to? I don't, I don't want to share it because it was kind of kind of embarrassing. But it all boys know this. We have no common sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have no brain, Doss. <laughs> so we've all, I'm assuming, we've all experienced bad advice. And it can even be from other Christians too, unfortunately. It can, be, it can come from anyone. <clears throat> and it says, blessed are you if you recognize that it's bad advice and you don't take it. You guys are a lot quieter than I expected, especially you, Ben. <laughs> you can turn it off if you want to. Yeah. All right. My question would be, what does the word wicked mean? Yes. Unholy. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Nope. <clears throat> huh? Can can anyone elaborate if they would like to? Okay. For example, I would say. The world has a set of rules, right? Don't steal. That's usually part of God's rule. Um, a lot of those things. But there are rules that the government says that are uh, okay to do, right? Does that mean it's okay for us to do those things, even if the world says it's okay? Even God's word says it's not okay? No? So Uh -huh. Right. And so do we, we understand that the world, they're not living according to God's word, right? <clears throat> so the law, you, you won't get arrested, and I, and I hate to pop.
pop the bubble, but you're not going to get arrested for for two females holding hands and dating one another, right? They legalize that. But if we look at scripture, it says it's an abomination. It's bad, right? And so what the world calls is good does not always mean that it's good to God, you know? Now, it doesn't mean that we don't love them and we don't care about them. It doesn't mean that we hate them. It means that, you know, like my children, you see them, they're running around. They don't know that, you know, balls are flying. You know, they think it's fun. They think it's okay. But, you know, one day those, as today, those balls are going to hit them in the face. You know, and God wants to protect us from that. But he does give us free will, you know to either do what's right or to do whatever we want to do or think is right. Right. That's just a hard thing to learn. I'm still learning how to not do that, you know, to see the person behind um, the sin, you know. I, I experience it in my own family when when my loved ones do something that bothers me a lot. <laughs> and I need to remember, you know, but I don't. But we need to try. We need to try to remember um, that God loves them. But we need to experience that love from him at first. You know, we can't love people in our own strength, in our own wisdom or whatever. We have to receive that love from God first. You know, so people in this world, they they try to, I've been really trying to get this analogy right, but it'd be really hard to make an apple out of nothing, wouldn't it? It'd be easier to water the tree that makes the apple. And so God waters us so we bear fruit, real, genuine kindness. I can do all the nice things I want, but not really mean it. And that's what we call religion, right? All right. Um, any questions so far? No? Boring? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making sense. Yeah. When you make sense, sense. It's, it's just like no one can really say it except they have no question. Oh, like a conviction? <laughs> You're something. I think no. I think yeah. no schools is really getting to our heads. Okay, I'm I'm trying. All right. Um, another one would be sinners, which means the same thing as wicked. Oh, let's, let me go into the interpretation of wicked. Someone who is guilty of a crime, deserving punishment or death. Someone who did what was wrong or an evil person. Someone who goes around offending people. Um, people who are hostile to God. Another word is condemned. And... What does that mean to you? To be guilty of a crime? A school bully? Pretty much. What do you mean? Like a school bully fits almost all of those descriptions that you said. Right. Going around offending people? Yeah. Why do you think that they do that? I don't I don't know, honestly. So honestly, I <laughs> the schools that I go to never have like a specific school bully. It's just if there's any fights there, there's any fights they end really quickly. Mm. Much. Just avoid the mm -hmm. Oh, what? For some people? Right. But there's a difference between, you know, um, 
camaraderie and putting people down like out of anger and hate, you know. Um, yeah, uh, I have my speculations why people do that because uh, I used to be sort of a bully, but in my own, we all have our sin. Um, we all make mistakes, but they're doing it because um, for various reasons. Um, usually because they're hurt. They go around bullying people because they're hurt. And they don't know how to deal with that guilt. You know, I have a a saying that goes, there's, there's two kinds of sort of people in this world. There's people who, who are bullies, right? Go around making everyone feel bad. And then there's the other ones that are victims that go around. Um, they don't go around, but they're, they're, uh, they never feel like they're good enough. They never feel like they're worth anything or they have any value. Um, so they beat themselves up a lot. You know, and, it, and, and we all struggle with that, I believe. And it's a balance. And we find our perfect balance in Christ. You know, we are not our mistakes. We just made a mistake. You know, we have value. You know, Jesus showed us the value that we have. You know, he gave himself up for us. He died on a cross for our sins. You know, in our sins, what they do is they make us feel ashamed. When we sin against God, we feel like we don't fit in. And let's just say, for example, someone sins against you, right? And they were wrong. But harboring that guilt or anger towards that person is just as wrong as committing a sin to others. Because God doesn't want us to live in bondage to that. So... In my life, I grew up in a really bad situation. My parent, my dad left. My mom, I don't, I've never talked to my dad since I was five. And my mom, she was an alcoholic for all of my life. And I saw men come and go and all that stuff. And all I was familiar with was yelling and screaming every night and fighting, you know, and cops and all that. And that kind of became my norm. You know, so I had a lot of anger towards my dad and I had a lot of anger towards my mom and I got into drugs and all that and alcohol as a form of rebellion. Um, I had a lot going on, but as you can see, I'm not that person anymore. You know, God has transformed me from within. You know, I've learned to let go of that pain and give it to Jesus. And that's what Jesus, when he first met me, when I, when I, he knew me, but when I met him for the first time, and he said, you're in a lot of pain. And he said, give it to me. And I, and I surrendered all that pain and, and all that guilt, all that anger I had towards certain people in my life. And I realized what the cross represents is it represents life beyond pain. Now, it doesn't excuse the person for those people or whatever happened. There were a lot of other things that happened in my life. But what it did do was it set me free. And I was able to experience peace. And I was able to experience love. And I was able to feel like I fit in, you know, again. And I was able to understand their pain and why they do that to each other. You know, um, they may never say, I'm sorry. But when you can receive the forgiveness from God, then you can forgive and you can love people. There's a Bible verse that goes, for those who've been forgiven much, love much. It wasn't easy to forgive those people. It took time over and over and over again. Jesus came to me and said, you still haven't fully forgiven them, but I'm going to help you over the course of time. And it's like, you know, my definition of hell is to carry that burden, is to carry unforgiveness. That's my definition. Because when you're in it, you think that that becomes your world. 
becomes your world to hate the person, you know, or to justify or whatever. But when you finally lay it down and give it to the Lord, you become free again. You begin to have peace again. You begin to feel accepted again. And then you begin to not only live again, but um, be a part of something. Feel like you belong. See, what sin does is it, it makes us feel guilty. And it makes us angry. And it makes us bitter. And it makes us everything that God did not design us to be. So when we give those things to him, we get to really experience the joy and the peace, you know, of what he has provided for free. And we don't no longer have to live in a world that is about performance. You know, your value is only found in how you perform or what you look like or, or this or that. So the Psalms overall, what time is it, by the way? 5.5. I'm going to wrap up. Um, the Psalms is about two paths. The path that God has for each and every one of us that is going to fulfill our lives. It's the only thing that's going to satisfy all of our desires. And then the evil path never satisfies it's like, can you imagine being hungry and you sit down and you eat this big meal? Let's just say Thanksgiving, right? And you sit down, and you're like, I'm so hungry and you eat it up. And at the end, you're like, I'm still hungry. That'd be horrible, wouldn't it? I mean, I know y'all teenagers, y'all can eat up everything. I have to tell you not to eat the carpet before you get here. I'm not even 12. You like food? Yeah. So you can you can relate. But that's what that's what it's like. The world says if you become famous, then you'll be accepted, then you'll be loved. It's not true. Or if you if you go into the drug route or the alcohol, right? And there's all these other paths that says if you follow these paths, if you do this, you will be happy. Or even religion. But the path that really brings us happiness is the path that God has for us. God has a path and a plan for each and every one of us. And he wants us to be happy. And he wants us to feel loved. And he wants us to be accepted, to not just to feel these things, to know that we're accepted, to know that we're loved. And if we're not on his path, we're not going to feel or experience those things. We're not going to have peace. We're not going to feel loved. We're not going to feel accepted. So when I struggle in my life with my faith walk, the path that the parts of my life where I'm just doing, feeling amazing, is, the, is when I know that I'm on God's path. And the paths that and when I'm off that path, that yellow brick road, y'all seen The Wizard of Oz, right? When I'm off that path, I feel anxious, I feel nervous, I feel afraid, I feel scared, I feel angry. I feel all that because I'm separated from him, right? And I'm even like doing these Christian things. I'm like, surely this is what God wants me to do. And then he reminds me, he's like, you're not on my path, you're on your own path. And so... If I'll leave anything with you here today is the key to happiness is to serve God and to know Him. We were created to know Him. We, can, we take every breath because He allows us to. And He wants us to know that He loves us. You know, I like to use the analogy of the shoes. Your shoes were created to be worn on your feet, right? I mean, you guys are more valuable than shoes, but, but they were created for a purpose. Your shoes help with restless legs. <laughs> I wish. 
So. I'm kind of interested, but we're at a <laughs> Well, she was wondering what kind of shoe she was, so I said chocolate. And then he said that I would be colorful. And he said chocolate. Chocolates are colorful. I should have never said shoes. <laughs> I know, right? Well, any last thoughts? Anyone have anything to say? Other than shoes? Yes. You said that when we're off the path of, of God, you get anxious and a lot of other stuff. I'm just anxious all the time. Right. Well, uh, we might have to talk a little more on that, but for the most part... Um, we all, we all go through this human journey together. And so we all experience sort of the same things in different ways. But as far as emotions, we experience the same thing. Right? Yeah. Honestly, I'm just, I'm just anxious because my legs, my, my legs need to be comfortable. Oh. <laughs> all right. If you're anxious, you do not <laughs> <laughs> And that will conclude our lesson for today. Thank you guys for coming and listening to me babble. Take a bow? No, that's, that's a little too arrogant. I mean, I'm arrogant, but it's a question. See, I bowed.